Today we're in Queens, New York, outside of Topaz Arts, a creative development center that hosts a dance studio where we'll be meeting with Ryan McNamara. Ryan is a performance artist whose work explores what it's like to be a person today in our largely media-driven and saturated world. Past performances have seen him learning to dance over the course of five months in front of the public at PS1, or buried in the ground up to his neck singing love songs. He performs, but he also choreographs the movement of others, creating works like Meme, a story ballet about the internet or Misty Malarkey Ying Yang, which used President Jimmy Carter's 1979 Malaise speech as a point of departure. Ryan's work creatively upends expectations, as well as the traditional separation between audience and performer. So let's go talk to Ryan and see what he's cooked up for us. Hi, I'm Ryan McNamara, and this is your art assignment. So I'm not a dancer. Don't claim to be a dancer. I. Um, the project you're talking about um, was at PS1 a few years ago um, called Make Ryan a Dancer. Um, and I, yeah, I had people come to the, the museum um, every day and, and teach me a different kind of dance. And, you know, from ballet to um, stripping to uh, contact improv, kind of just a wide array of things. It was embarrassing you know, <laughs> um, at first. But then there was, there was, a, there was something very liberating about it at the end. I don't film myself dancing that often. And that was fascinating to watch because, you know, we see ourselves in the mirror, but we don't see. So that was just amazing. It was like watching someone else dance. And so that was really um, weird and exciting. And um, so, yeah, I mean, that actually was very helpful to be like, oh, wow, that's how my body does it. And then for me, I just thought, well, rather than, uh, you know, I'm not not trying out for a part on Broadway. So rather than try to sort of correct those things, I just said, well, I'll just lean into those sort of idiosyncratic movements that I've had. And that's actually when I'm working with um, performers and dancers. I think they have that as well. You know, I mean, that's why I work with them because they have their personalities reflected in the way they move rather than just being able to have the perfect, you know, pointed foot. Um, you know, much more interested in that kind of uh, personality shining through, and it does. So your assignment is to find a clip of movement on the internet, something around a minute or less, just anything that you respond to, um, and I want you to watch it once. Then I want you to film yourself replicating that movement. Then I want you to forget about the original video and just watch the video you just made of yourself and I want you to replicate the movement that you see in that and film it. Then I want you to forget about the first video made and watch the second video and try to replicate the movement that you did in that and film that. So it's like a game of movement telephone. So Sarah, have you ever seen the video Tortoise Upside Down is Ignored by His Friends? <laughs> no. Oh. Because I think that would be great would, for this. Would that? Would you like to do that? I will totally do it. Well, I haven't seen it, so why don't you? You. I'll do it, and that. then you can do do it based on what I do. Okay. Well, that was humiliating. Yeah, definitely. Um, but it did make me think about memes and the way that, like, as people make things, uh, they change. Right, and Ryan has done this performance that's thought about this before, but this assignment gets to the essence of how things transform in interpretation. Right, I'm sure there's art historical precedent for that. Well, sure there is. You can think about the many people who have painted the Madonna and Child over time or sculpted it. I have seen a lot of those when you have made me go to museums. But that is not actually what I want to talk about today. I think we should go back to the origin of the term meme. And do you know where that comes from, John? I do, yeah. Uh, uh, Richard Dawkins. Your favorite person. My favorite person. Yes, from his book, The Selfish Gene, from 1976. Let's look at what he exactly said about this. A new kind of replicator has recently emerged. It is still in its infancy, still drifting clumsily about in its primeval soup, but already it is achieving evolutionary change at a rate which leaves the old gene panting far behind. The new soup is the soup of human culture. 
We need a name for the new replicator, a noun which conveys the idea of a unit of cultural transmission or a unit of imitation. My meme comes from a suitable Greek root, but I want a monosyllable that sounds a bit like gene. I hope my classicist friends will forgive me if I abbreviate my meme to meme. It could alternatively be thought of as related to memory or to the French word mem. Examples of memes are tunes, ideas, catchphrases, clothes fashions, ways of making pots or of building arches. Just as genes propagate themselves in the gene pool by leaping from body to body via sperms or eggs, so do memes propagate themselves in the meme pool by leaping from brain to brain via a process which, in the broad sense, can be called imitation. I've been doing this process now with uh, 20 dancers of watching something and kind of making it our own. And, um, you know, I, I think that we've always used it you know, I think it's really interesting to use it as a guide, you know, um, something really um, basic, you know, um, and then allowing yourself to inhabit it um, in a way I think that's what I find really interesting. Um, I'll always find that more interesting than someone who can just replicate it perfectly, um, you know, someone who kind of owns it themselves. Um, so that would be my advice is really just make it your own. I mean, it's going to be a much more exciting process for you. Um, this is not about getting frustrated or, you know, um, anything like that. It's, it's, it's sort of about an exploration. So. Okay, so to uh, demonstrate the assignment, I've invited uh, Mickey Mahar here. He's a New York-based performer um, who uh, has uh, I've worked with for about the past year. And um, we've chosen a video clip that actually Mickey has never seen before. Um, and while Mickey is a professional dancer, this is not necessarily the genre that he's used to dancing. Um, in fact, we're gonna be looking at a video of two uh, orangutans playing. Um, so we're gonna watch about 50, uh, 30 seconds of it. You ready? Okay, go. Now, Mickey is going to forget about the first video. just replicate the movement of this one. I like okay. the hold at the end. Yeah. That's nice. Okay. All right, you ready? Yeah. Forget about that one. that one, and now we've got a new one coming our way. Okay. Got it? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. You're such a good orangutan, Mickey. Yeah, Thank you so much. <laughs>great thing about YouTube is they give you suggestions right after, so <laughs> you have 10 choices right after, yeah. The great and bad thing in that, you know, there's the rest of your afternoon. 